Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the new week, and I hope you have a nice weekend. So in this week, we plan to finish the SQL sections, and we have another section left, which is on the SQL constraints and the triggers. We plan to finish this section, and we have a reminder that uh, we have the homework three and nine to be due by this Friday. And generally, after we finish the Monday and Wednesday classes, you should be able to do the homework three now. And please do the homework as early as possible, so you don't need to rush at the very end. And besides the SQL constraints and triggers, we also plan to move to the indexing section uh, in this week, which is also the most important section for database systems. And for the indexing section, we plan to introduce different data structures we used for help the queries inside database systems, which can improve the query efficiency greatly. Okay, for the SQL constraint triggers, we have so many materials to be covered. Generally, the materials included in this section can cover about the constraints and the triggers. Before we enter the details, I'd like to provide you with some high-level ideas about the constraint and the triggers. So formally, a constraint denotes a relationship among data elements that DBMS is required to enforce. And we provide you with the example of the keys. So generally, for each of the table or the relation, we must have a key for the table for the relation, right? Besides the keys, we also have many other constraints, like foreign keys, reference integrating constraints, as well as some other constraints on that particular attribute, like essential. So constraint is very important. It is also one part of a database design. So when we design a database system, we might ask yourself what are the constraints to be included in the database systems. Another component to be introduced in this section is called triggers. Trigger is also a new concept. It's our first time to define or to introduce this concept for database systems. So formal triggers are only executed when a specific condition occurs, like the insertion of a tuple or the update of a tuple. It is very easy to implement the many other constraints. So literally, when we are running our system, many things can happen, right? If something happens, it will trigger a trigger in the database system, and the trigger will do some actions to respond to some cases or conditions. So triggers is very important, and it can also provide a database system with some intelligent response or actions in the running time. So both constraints and triggers will be covered in this uh, section. So for the kinds of constraints besides keys, we also have the foreign keys or the referential integrators. They are all the constraints in the relations in the database design process. Besides this uh, constraint, we also have some uh, value-based constraints. Now we have constraint values of a particular attribute. Normally, all the attributes in our database systems, we will have some like data types, right? Like either a string or integer or float. And we also provide some constraint for the value range. Like uh, we mentioned before, for the age of a human being, it will be a value within 0 to 140, right? If we have an age, the value is negative 1, it will be invalid. Therefore, for many of the attributes, we also have some value-based constraints. Besides the value-based constraints, uh, we may also introduce some tuple-based constraints, like the relationships among the components. And besides these constraints, another important constraint we will introduce in this section is called assertions. So assertion is a Boolean expression we write in SQL. Generally, we need to maintain many assertions when we run our system. But we need to make sure our system can make these assertions valid during the running time. So the search under some Boolean expressions. In other words, we need to make sure this Boolean expression will always be true during the system running time. So these are some examples of the constraints we need to uh, use in database system design. And in the following parts, we went through some of these constraints. We have been talking about foreign case for many times before, right? And here we also would like to provide more information for foreign keys if we plan to use them in SQL. Formally, when we design the relations, we may need to refer to the attributes from some other relations, right? 
And in this way, we need to declare some attributes to be the following key, right? If you still remember. And we, here we provide you with an example. Let's, let's consider a relation for sales, denoting some bar, C, some B, with some price. So this sale denotes a relationship between bar and B, right? If we translate this relationship into relations, we can design it as a sales, and we need to borrow the bar and the beer, its attributes from their connected entities. So this bar and beer together, we define the key for the sales, right? We have the price as the extra attribute for the sales record. So here, we will design a sales relation. We need to refer, we need to, we need to borrow the attributes bar and beer, which are actually the key for the bar's table or the relation, as well as the beer relation, right? And we need to declare this bar attribute and B attribute to be the following key in the sales table. And we might expect that beer value is really a beer. In other words, it should be something appearing in the beer's table, right? Normally, when we design a sales table, we need to make sure all the bars and beers appearing inside this table should be valid, should be some real bars and real beers. If so, then we need to use the foreign key to help us. Foreign key denotes a, a constraint requires a beer in the sales table to be some key in the beer's table, and we can declare it as a foreign key constraint. When we write the foreign key in SQL, we need to use this uh, keyword in the expression. So we need to use these references as the expression keyword. And we can use these references either within the declaration of the attribute, where only one attribute is involved, or we can use it as an element of the schema. So we can provide you with the example. When we define a sales table, right? And at the end, we can add one more row, a foreign key. Inside it, we have a parenthesis. Inside the parenthesis, we have a bunch of attributes to be declared as a foreign key, right? And we need to use the references as the expression keywords, reference to some relations, as well as their specific attributes. And this referenced attribute must be declared as a primary key or unique in this referred relation. Now here, if we build this sales table, we refer this bar, this attribute to the bar's table as foreign key, then this bar attribute should be the primary key in the bar's table. Similarly for beers, this B attribute should be also be the primary key in the beers table. In this way, we can declare them as a foreign key we refer to. And we'll provide with some more examples for the sales table. If you still remember, we created a beers table before, right? We have a B and M, it's a primary key, and we have a beer manufacturer. Both of them, they are the chart 20. And based on beers, we can create a sales table the bar chart 20, beer chart 20. Here we use the first way for representing this uh, foreign key within the declaration of attribute. We just follow this attribute, we declare it as a foreign key, referencing the beers we have a name inside parentheses. In other words, this beer, this attribute here, we refer to this name attribute inside the BS table, we declare above. Then we also have the price, it is a real number. So this is the one way to create this sales table. Here we should also refer this bar to the bar's table, even though we didn't show it here. We just use this beer as an example to illustrate the foreign key expressions in SQL. So this is the one way to declare foreign keys within the declaration of an attribute. We can also declare this foreign key as element of the schema as well which is shown in this page. We have a beers table showing above, and we can further create the sales table in another way. It is the same as the previous table, however, we declare the foreign key in a different way. We have bar, chart 20, beer, chart 20, price real, and after it, we have this foreign key, beer, on the B attribute, reference to the beers table on this name attribute. So this is another way to declare the foreign key for some attributes in current tables in SQL.